Welcome back to the Messianic Hour. I'm your host, Rabbi Scott. The show is dedicated to reaching the lost and educating the found. And we're uh, live in studio with Reuben Prager of, uh, say the name of your ministry? Begged Ivri. Begged Ivri, which means? Hebrew Garments, Biblical That's Garments. Right. And you have a, you're part of a bigger group of uh, ministries in Israel that are looking to restore the Third Temple, also to restore the Biblical Garments and the Customs, of the day. Uh, you, you brought a great example, and I want to encourage you, if you have not yet, go to our website. Uh, you can go to the archive. You were just speaking at our congregation uh, this week, and uh, you come in. You tour the U.S., usually the southern areas, uh, uh, and then have you, do you also go up north, too? I do two tours a year. The, uh, the summer tour, I drive from Miami to Seattle and back, covering the entire country. And the winter tour, I do basically Miami to Albuquerque, New Mexico, and back, um, staying south of Highway 40, keeping out of the snow zones. <laughs> <laughs> and so if, if any of a church or a congregation wants you to come, they can contact you. Why don't you give them that information? We'll also have it on our website, too. Absolutely. Um, you can reach me by email at beggedivri, B-E-G-E-D-I-V-R-I, at hotmail.com, and we will be happy to include you in our itinerary in the upcoming tour. And, and for those pastors out there who might be thinking, oh, this will be expensive, I want you to know it's it's not. He comes in basically for a hotel and a, a very nominal uh, uh, honorarium, so it's well worth it. Your people will be really blessed by it. We've had you for a number of years, and I keep suggesting more and more uh, congregations to have you because it's such an important thing. So I w- really want you to check this out, but let's talk a little bit about it. You come from a Orthodox background, um, and, or I should say, a, I don't know if the Orthodox is the right word. What would, word would you use on that? Well, actually, I grew up in a, in a non-observant conservative family in Miami right. Beach. Um, when I moved to Jerusalem in 1977, I began to study in a yeshiva in a religious seminar. And I've been a, what, what, what the world would understand as an Orthodox Jew, right. a, an observant Torah, observant Jew uh, since then. And... Uh, an unorthodox orthodox Thanks, too. <laughs> I like that because you're not a you're not a black coat, black pants. But you brought up. Let's talk about that for a little bit. You you brought up a great point on that. You you're really bringing back how it was at the time of the first temple and even before then. What what the garments that God uh, Adonai told us to wear. So why don't you tell a little bit about that real quick? Right. Um, basically, the, to whatever extent people are familiar with contemporary Jewish custom. Pretty much everything that we do today in, in contemporary Judaism, we do as a remembrance of things we used to do for real. And my work is researching and restoring to the real form those things that we've done for the last 2,000 years of exile as a remembrance. For instance, the, what people are familiar with as the talit, the prayer shawl. Right. Um, everybody has an image in their mind of a Jew covered with a, with a prayer shawl during the time of prayer. But our ancestors did not uh, fulfill the commandment of fringes from the book of Numbers, chapter 15, verses 37 to 41, with an artificial prayer shawl worn only at the time of prayer. We used to wear our fringes on the corners of our garments daily, beautiful outer right. garments. Um, the first uh, project that I, I took from thought to physical reality was to restore our ancient uh, uh, dress, our ancient way of, of dressing. And Begid Ivri, Biblical Garments, um, for the last 28 years, my workshop in Jerusalem has produced a beautiful line of biblical garments for the modern Israelite so that those of us who have returned to the land, we can begin to dress and look like we live there. And for those of you who watch the uh, our services on a weekly basis, those garments that I wear are all right from this gentleman. He is my tailor. <laughs> <laughs> and, and so it's a really important to realize that's the type of garment or similar uh, outer garment that they would have worn at the time. And, and so that's really what's important about bringing them back to not what we've made them into, but going back to the original product. Right. Um, a, it's, it's funny you say that I'm your, your tailor. It's like <laughs> being a Levite, right? So I have the Levite jeans, you know? <laughs> <laughs> you know? Um, yeah, I, I, I make a, 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 what I refer to as the biblical talit right. is exactly what was worn during the time of the, let's say, uh, from the time that we received the commandment up through the destruction of the Second Temple up until the Hadrianic Decree of the year 135, um, the, the, what, if you look on my website at begadivri.com, what I have listed as the biblical tally, that's exactly what we wore right. during those days. And, and including the blue dye on the center string, so that's important that you, 
you brought that back. What, how many years ago did you did that start? Right. I, I, I don't want to say that I brought that back. What I did succeed in doing is breaking the taboo against wearing it. That's true. Um, the great sage Rabbi Gershon Henoch Leiner from the city of Radzin in Eastern Europe in 1887 re-identified the dye source for the required biblical blue fringe. When I got to Jerusalem in 1977, which was 90 years later, um, nobody wore the blue fringe. They right. knew about it. One in ten, tens of thousands would wear it. Um, our greatest success in the last 28 years of, of work has been to break the taboo against wearing the blue fringe. When you come to Jerusalem today, you'll see everywhere, everybody's, you know, the, the trend is to move back into the blue. Right. And for those of you who want to know more about that, again, visit our website. We have it, uh, we'll have a link right on there for this teaching that he did this this past week. Uh, so you can hear all about which animal that that the blue dye comes from, because it's going to surprise you what, what it comes from. Right. Uh, and you also developed, uh, something that you did bring back, though, I can't say, is the holy half shekel. Right. Be, um, between biblical garments and the holy half shekel, though, the second project that we brought to physical reality was to restore our ancient marriage ceremony. That's right. Right, where we crown our brides with a Jerusalem of gold bridal crown, a golden crown, and we carry the bride in a royal wedding litter known as the Aperion, A-P-E-R-I-O-N. The biblical source is the book Song of Songs. Some might know it as the Song of Solomon, chapter 3, verses 9 and 10, where it describes the wedding litter made for King Solomon's wedding. And since 19, a, ni 1992, 1992 um, next year is the 20th anniversary right. of the restoration of biblical weddings, um, we've been performing biblical weddings throughout the Holy Land and also for people that have a significant anniversary coming up, um, a, you can come to Jerusalem and we will crown your bride with a Jerusalem of gold bridal crown, carry her through the streets of Jerusalem on a royal wedding litter to the accompaniment of shofar blowers and harpists and will recreate a biblical wedding for your anniversary celebration. And it's, uh, you know, we are going back to Israel uh, May 28th through June 7th, so if you want to get information on our trip to Israel, please email us at mail at rabbiscott.com. We have you come speak to the group, but, you know, you made that comment. We should have had you uh, be able to redo it. We actually had two weddings of that particular one uh, that happened, their anniversaries. One was the 50th anniversary, and I wish we I know they would have loved to do, have done that. Uh, we came up to your, uh, your studio, and uh, my daughter, Natalie, who's uh, only 10, came, you put her in the garment. I said, not for many years, <laughs> but it was beautiful, and it, it's a great way to do it. So if you want more information, you want to know about it, again, visit our website. we got a link to yours as well. we got about just over two minutes left uh, in this segment. I want you to talk about the, the Holy Half Shekel and the fact that you uh, can people can actually help to give this to soldiers, and, and so I want them to get involved with that. Right. Um, our latest restoration project, uh, we restored the, the giving of a pure silver holy half shekel in fulfillment of the commandment from the book of Exodus, chapter 30, verses 11 to 16, where each of us is commanded to give back to God half a, 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 half a shekel of the holy shekel, um, a, a pure silver holy half shekel. And we instituted a program several years ago um, called half a shekel for a soldier, because this, the half shekel was specifically a soldier's commandment. Right. And people can purchase a, a half shekel, and we give it to, f to a soldier in the Israel Defense Forces for free. And then, of course, you get a follow-up email confirming that your, your coin was delivered. Um, you can find uh, that at sh on the web at shekel IDF. Israel Defense Forces dot org, shekelidf.org, and go into the website, read about it, and sponsor a soldier. That's great, and we'll have that link directly on our website at rabbiscott.com. So uh, I really want to encourage our listening audience out there. This is a great program to get involved with. They, they really need to help these soldiers. It's a, it's a great way for them to reconnect with their, with their inner being. I mean, here's people that are putting, just like here in the United States, they put their life on the line to defend our country. That brings you a little closer to God. I, you know, they, uh, they said there's not too many uh, you know, atheists in foxholes. And to realize that and the importance of fulfilling the biblical requirements, this is able to do it. And tell us a little bit. we got about uh, 40 seconds left on this. What about the little designs on the coin? So what, what does the coin look like? I know it's silver, but what do they look like? Well, they can go into the website at begadivery.com to see each of the 15 la the last 15 years' worth of coins. We, we feature on the obverse of each year's coin a vessel that's been um, restored to physical reality for the Third Temple era. So the coins can be used not only to teach about the half shekel, but also to uh, 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 show all the different vessels that are being restored for the Third Temple era. Well, I, again, I want to encourage our listening audience, 
go watch uh, him on our video. We have the full, it's about two hour video. He can come teach at your church or congregation uh, and visit his website. Join this. It's a great uh, way to be a part of it. And until next week, this is Rabbi Scott saying shalom and pray for the peace of Jerusalem.